With its liberal democracy and friendly people, Taiwan is rated as a top destination for expats. But for the 700,000 migrant workers who live here, there's a side of Taiwan that's less hospitable. That was never more clear than last month. As the COVID surge swept the country, migrant workers became the only people to come under a hard lockdown. Authorities say the lockdown is over, but in a Formosa News investigation, reporter Stephanie Yang finds evidence that it's continued to this day, even with the virus contained. Miaoli is a quiet county located on Taiwan's west coast. It is home to an industrial park where factory workers hailing from Vietnam, the Philippines, Indonesia and Thailand make high-tech products for a hungry global market. I'm currently at Dunan Science Park, where semiconductors are made, tested and packaged. This May, it was hit hard by a COVID outbreak, which threatened to disrupt production. The first cases were two Filipino men from the same company. Like many other migrant workers in Miaoli, the two men lived in factory dormitories where cramped conditions were the perfect ground for the virus to spread. In line with protocol, the cases and their contacts were immediately placed in isolation. But by June 6, the virus had spread to two other companies in the park, infecting more than 200 people. 80% of them were migrant workers. It was then that the local government decided on a lockdown for all migrant workers in the county. Effective immediately, this county's migrant workers may not go outside, except during commuting hours. Taiwan was at a time under a level 3 COVID alert, which permits freedom of movement. But soon, signs were going up across the county, asking Taiwanese families not to let their live-in helpers outside. Factory workers were barred from leaving their dorms, except to work. Violators were stopped by police and patrol. What is your name? And they were threatened with fines by their employer. I spoke to one migrant worker who said her dorm manager promised a bonus for those who complied. But that bonus never materialized. We didn't expect them to receive it. That's why everybody complied with the, you know, lockdown, no going out policy. Right? Unfortunately, on the 5th, that's our payday. We can't receive anything. Proponents of the measure argue that lockdown was an emergency measure needed at a time when COVID was spreading fast across the country. Migrant workers have turned Miao Li upside down. Let me ask you all, how would you feel if, as I described earlier, you caught COVID, perhaps even died from it? You wouldn't be arguing over human rights then. But concerns were raised by labor activists and the public. The county leader's Facebook page was hit with criticism, accusing Miao Li of launching a witch hunt against migrant workers. Throughout the pandemic, the Central Epidemic Command Center has been Taiwan's main decision-making body. But when questioned about the Miao Li lockdown, the CECC distanced itself, saying it was a unilateral decision by the county government. Two weeks later, Miao Li announced the cluster contained and the lockdown over. I also want to announce on this occasion that as of June 28th, all our migrant workers are officially released from lockdown. But a Formosa News investigation carried out in July found that lockdown restrictions are still largely in place. After one month, the Miaoli County government lifted its COVID lockdown restrictions on migrant workers at Dunan Sands Park. But what has life been like for migrant workers after the lockdown? Here at a market popular among migrant workers, there's hardly anyone here because some migrant workers are still restricted from moving around freely. This store, once popular with migrant workers, now sits empty. An employee here says that business has not returned since the lockdown. Sometimes there are vendors here, but not anymore. There are no vendors here because of the epidemic. Also next door, there's a store selling Filipino food. It's also been impacted. I encountered one worker outside the factory where she works and another one just outside of her dormitory. They said they still spend most of their free time confined to their dorms. We are just allowed for one or two hours, just for the protection for all of us.
one migrant worker spoke to me via video call from inside her dorm. She said she was forced to move out of her rented apartment during the lockdown and has not been allowed to return since. I'm in front of an apartment that's rented out to migrant workers. A source told me her company ordered all migrant workers to move out of their apartments. For weeks now, they have been living inside company dorms. Now most of the migrant workers have moved away. I rarely see them now. There used to be a lot of migrant workers, probably more than 20, but now there aren't any. A major chip tester in Miaoli, where the first COVID cases were reported, declined my request for an interview, but a company representative was willing to confirm that strict measures were still in place on migrant workers. And their coordinators. Gina Lin is a former staff member at the de facto Philippines Embassy. She says that ever since Miaoli's outbreak, lockdown restrictions have been quietly imposed at other factories across Taiwan. Outside Miaoli, some other places, in, in Taichung, Kaohsiung, the latest I heard is in Tainan and Kaohsiung. It's uh, quite serious. I spoke to two migrant workers in Taoyuan who said that they are under a lockdown. They showed me their dormitory. They've been told they can go outside for one hour every month on their payday. Only we have a salary. Today, we, our salary day, just one hour where we go out. So many people here in the room, uh, 10, 10 people. The internet is only one hour. As last, last night. They don't, they don't want to, they don't want us to go outside. COVID had already exposed the, the real problem. The cluster was not caused by the foreign workers. It was caused by a very cramped dormitory. They are cramping people from 8 to 10. There are 12. The worst, the worst I've heard is 30, 30 persons in a room. And there are rats running around. There are water dripping all around. And uh, there are all, um, only limited bathrooms and comfort rooms for them to use. Migrant workers told me these dorms feel no better than jails. Some say they understand that the continued confinement is for their safety and the public good. But they ask why the broader Taiwanese community is not subjected to the same policy. You're basically like incarcerated. It's okay if everyone is treated the same. But you know, you know, you know how you feel when you're walking, you're afraid and you see locals jogging, running, mm. and they're free. So you know how it feels, right? Mm. And it's, it's, it's painful. And I'm glad that they lifted the ban. There's no reason why we shouldn't be going out. Mm -hmm. Because there's no lockdown. It's just level three. Everyone else is allowed to. Why can't we? I asked the Ministry of Labor why they can't go out. An official told me that legally they can. He said the central government neither ordered nor authorized a lockdown on migrant workers at any point. There is no compulsory lockdown restriction. Employers cannot restrict migrant workers from going outside because that conflicts with migrant workers' right to freedom of movement, which is protected in this country. Zhuang said that the ongoing lockdown was being enforced illegally by the employers. He encouraged migrant workers to report unlawful treatment to the labor ministry. We recommend that these migrant workers call the 1955 hotline. We'll have the local government mediate the dispute. Workers can also seek compensation through civil litigation. But even though they have legal recourse, few migrant workers are fully informed of their rights or have the means to defend them. Without the right to vote, they have no political sway, making them easy to ignore. Scholars say that more action needs to come from the top down to protect them. And the Ministry of Labor should have more engagement, more field actions in addition to their their uh, administrative uh, guidance and really deploy the resources to help the employers and then to, to really improve the living conditions. Even as they battle COVID-19, Taiwan's industrial parks have promised to supply the world with semiconductors. But the virus has exposed, once again, the vulnerability of the workers they desperately need. 
As Taiwan rises to greater prominence in the global supply chain, it faces a reckoning with how it treats the migrant workers who power its economy. For most of the news, Stephanie Yang, Ling Dongming in Miaoli and Taipei.